Next up on our tutorial tour of Lightroom is the details panel. In here I'm going to show you how to control noise in your images, um, why you would get noise in your images, and I'm also going to show you how uh, we apply sharpening to our images. Um, so I have a couple of different examples of that, so stick around. In this video, I'm going to actually take you into Lightroom again, and we're going to work on two different images. One was shot at night um, with Cinderella Castle, and um, it was shot at a very low ISO, so the image is nice and clean. There's no digital noise. So if you don't know what that is, I'm going to show you in this video. But basically, when your phone or camera or anything that you're taking a picture with is having trouble getting enough light to the sensor, what it does is it digitally boosts it by raising the camera's ISO. Now on your phone, you don't even know that it's doing that. And on a lot of cameras, if you're shooting in auto, you won't know either. But when you're using a DSLR and you have more control over your settings and things like that, and you start to get into photography, you're going to notice that you're going to have to raise the ISO in order to brighten up the image so that it's usable. So when you see these images that Eric and I post at night or other photographers where it's a beautiful shot of something at night and everything is crystal clear and it just looks so clear. Chances are that that was shot off a tripod and the shutter was left open for anywhere from a few seconds up to a couple of minutes in order to let enough light in so that you can get a shot like that without having to boost up your ISO. So you leave your ISO at your camera's native range, which is with my cameras and Eric's, it's I think Eric's is actually 64, mine is 100, and that's going to give you the best image. So what happens when you take out your cell phone and you want to take a picture? Why does it always look worse than when you take the same picture during the day? Because what's happening is the camera, or the cell phone in this case, um, is sensing that there's not enough light to actually create the image. So it digitally boosts up the sensitivity of your sensor. The sensor in your phone is very small and the sensor in, say, my camera, which is a full-frame camera, um, has a little bit bigger sensor. So, you know, it's all relative. So, the smaller the sensor, the more degraded the image is going to be when you shoot it at night. So, that's why cell phone pictures usually look terrible at night. And for users of DSLR cameras, the bigger the sensor you have in your camera, you're going to have better low-light performance. So, when you have to boost up your ISO, it creates digital noise in the image and Lightroom has a way to correct this. So inside the details panel, which I'm going to show you here, um, there are adjustments where you can actually um, eliminate some of that noise and it also is going to take away some of the sharpness in your Im uh, image when you do that. So that's why the sharpening sliders I think are in the same panel. So you can work with them back and forth. So I'm going to go into the computer here and I'm going to show you how um, we would edit an, an image with um, a lot of digital noise. It was from Pirates of the Caribbean, very dark ride, perfect example of how you would combat this um, in post-production. And then the picture of Cinderella, uh, Cinderella Castle where I'm going to show you how to add some sharpening around the edges of your image. Okay, let's jump into the computer. So we're here in Lightroom in the library panel and um, library module and I've actually selected two images and I'm going to use these two to demonstrate how the details panel works inside of Develop. So I'm going to open up the develop module and down here on the right hand side is detail. It's under split toning. And inside this window you have a small preview window and then you have the actual adjustment sliders. So there's a sharpening section and a noise reduction section. And inside these two sections are different sliders that affect things differently. I'm actually going to reset this image. Um, so, in an image like this, when you look at it here on the screen, it doesn't look too bad. But inside these darker parts of the image, and even in some of the brighter parts, there is a lot of digital noise. And digital noise happens when the camera, either because you've set it that way, or you have it set in auto mode and the camera decides, but it raises the ISO. If you look under my histogram here, you see this image was taken at ISO 4000. 
So that means the sensor um, was digitally enhanced to be more sensitive to light. Typically, you'd want to shoot at a, the lowest ISO you can. So we try to keep our ISOs around 100 um, whenever we're working off tripods or, you know, whenever we can. But for a handheld image in a dark environment like this, um, you have to raise your ISO. Even though my lens is wide open as it can be, well, the, the reason the shutter speed is so fast here, and I'll talk about that later, is because I use spot metering here. And um, it's a way to get a nice, sharp image in a dark environment, but that's something different. That will have a different metering tutorial and explain why that's like that. But what you'll see here, if I go into the basic panel, and I raise the exposure, and then I zoom in, it's going a little tighter, you can see all of this digital noise. This is the graininess that you see here. This is supposed to be on the left hand side here. This is supposed to be black. This is a, just a black part of the image and you can see the digital noise. Now when I lower the exposure, it's still there but it's not as pronounced. But you can see there's really no sharpness to this image. So let's zoom out and do a quick edit on this so we can see what we want it to look like. I would open up the shadows a little bit. And anytime you adjust the shadow slider and bring up detail in the shadows, chances are there's some noise in there also. You can see it all down here. If I move the shadow slider back, that digital noise goes away. So this is um, a balancing act between the proper exposure and not making your image look too terrible because it's been degraded with all of this noise in it. So Lightroom has built into it inside the details panel a way to compensate for that. So when you know you have to use a high ISO you can take care of the digital noise that's in the image. Now it's not going to be perfect um, but what it will do is smooth out some of this. So if I take the noise slider and I move it to the right you'll see it smooths out the image. When I zoom out, it looks almost the same, but when you zoom in, watch what happens when I remove. You can see the big difference there in what the noise reduction has done. Now if you notice, the uh, detail and contrast sliders won't even be active until you add some luminance noise reduction to the image. And this is the main slider that we use in the noise reduction. So if I left it right there, and I want to move up. The detail slider, what that's going to do is try to give you back some of the details that you lost when you apply the noise reduction. So it's very subtle. Same thing with contrast. Super subtle. You almost won't notice it. Same thing with these sliders down here. They almost have no effect so when I slide them, you really can't see any difference. So Eric and I, when we edit and use noise reduction, we really use these two first two sliders, and that's pretty much it. We don't really mess with these other four too much because they don't affect the image that much. Um, so that's how Lightroom handles digital noise. Now, in the same panel, if I was still working on this image and I wanted to add some sharpening, to try to bring back some of the detail around the edges that we lost when we smoothed it out with the noise reduction, what I would do, is I would come here. Now watch what happens as I raise the sharpening. That looks worse than the digital noise that we were trying to fix. So how do we deal with that? Well, inside of Lightroom, there's a way to only apply the sharpening to different parts of the image and that's through the masking slider. So once you've applied some sharpening these three sliders will become active. If you click the masking slider and press the alt key on your keyboard your screen's going to turn white because right now sharpening has been applied to the entire image. But if I move this to the right only the white parts of the image are going to have sharpening applied. So the further I go, the less of the image is going to actually have sharpening applied. So I really just want the sharpening 
applied around the edges. So something like that. Now on the whole image you could see how it affects it. So I just want to have a minimal amount applied. Let's say right there. Let me zoom back in. And now I'm going to apply the sharpening. And as you can see, it's only applied around the edges, or the edges of the nose, in the cheek here, around the eyes. And you just have to find a spot that you're comfortable with that doesn't look too fake. Now, in this image, it's probably not a great example because it's been degraded pretty heavily, shooting in almost a, you know, a very, very dim lit environment at a very high ISO. So this is probably where I would leave an image like this. Um, I'm going to show you now how the sharpening tool would work on an image that's completely clean. So here's the picture. I'm going to reset it actually. Okay, so I did a quick edit on this image um, and I'll show you what it looked like beforehand. So this is the original image here and this is um, with a quick edit on it, I brought up the exposure and the shadows. So there's a lot of dark in this image also. But because this image was shot at ISO 100 with a 30 second exposure off a tripod, it's clean. So if I zoom in, there's no digital noise anywhere. Very little in the sky. But this is a clean image. So how would we use sharpening here? I actually wouldn't even apply noise reduction to this image in any way, but I would want to sharpen it up a bit. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the masking slider, and I only want it to affect the edges of the images. And we use this on buildings and landscapes, and um, anytime there's hard structures in an image. The only time you want to be careful with this is when you're working with people because you don't want the edges of a face or uh, people's features to have that digitally enhanced look. So you can do it with the masking here, but you can also apply sharpening um, with an adjustment brush and there are some other ways to do it in a portrait that we'll talk about in a portrait video. So here we are and I'm going to show you where the sharpening is going to be applied in this issue, uh, this image. Okay, let's zoom back in. And now I just want you to look at the bricks as I apply the sharpening. It's subtle, but if I go back and forth, you'll see they almost just pop a little bit more. And when I grab the detail slider and move that, it gets a little bit tighter. So now it almost looks blurry when I take the sharpening away. You see that? Now this is something you probably wouldn't have noticed if I, you know, didn't do it. But it's something that we do like to do because it gives the image just that little extra crispness, that little extra something. So this is a, a basic overview of the details panel in Lightroom. So we use it for sharpening on images that don't need noise reduction. And then we also will use it sometimes on images that do need noise reduction. and. Um, noise reduction is something that you have to, when you're editing, you go into your images and you'll see it. Um, when you zoom in, you'll see if you have to add noise reduction. And chances are, if you had to bring your ISO up, you are going to have to add noise reduction. Usually, during the day, this isn't going to be a problem, unless you have a very contrasty situation that you want to try to even out. And there's there may be some noise in the darker parts of the uh, image. But for the most part, this is... Uh, something you're going to need when you're working handheld in a dark environment. Okay, so that's it. Details panel in Lightroom. We'll see you in the next one. So that's the details panel in Lightroom. Uh, now hopefully you have a better understanding of why you have digital noise in your images and how you can fix it if you, you know, if you want to. Sometimes a little noise is not so bad in an image. Maybe you want to go for a grainy look. Um, and then hopefully the sharpening helps you. We use it, I, I know I use it almost always um, with anything that's like uh, not a person basically so buildings and landscapes and all that kind of stuff it just gives it a little extra crispness that um, you know just makes it a little sharper a little just that little something extra so we definitely use it sometimes 
I will just apply sharpening to a local spot on an image. And I'll do that with the adjustment brush, and we'll get into that when we talk about that. But if you take a photo at a very wide aperture and um, have a really shallow depth of field, so the background's nice and blurry, sometimes I even want to emphasize what's in focus more by adding some sharpening just to that. So that's another way you can use the sharpening tool, you know, in one of the other adjustment tools inside of Lightroom. Um, okay, if you like the video, please click like. If you like what we're doing on the channel here, please subscribe. And if you have any questions or you want to ask us anything, you can always contact us here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and we'll see you in the next video.